Travel in D&D can take many different forms depending on what kind of DM you are and what your players are looking for from the campaign. For some DMs, travel is just a necessary evil. It's a way to get the players from A to B in a larger adventure, and it often feels more like fast travel, interrupted with the occasional small incident on the road. At the other end of the spectrum we have DMs like myself for whom travel is most of the game. It's not a necessary evil, it's why we're excited to play D&D. In this video, and it is just going to be a, a quick video today, we're going to talk about how I run travel in Dungeons and & Dragons and why I would recommend my approach to travel to other DMs, especially newer DMs. In some of my previous videos I've talked about real-time travel, and I think that term is a little bit misleading. A, a, probably a more accurate way to describe the way I do travel in D&D is day-by-day -day travel. The best way to understand what makes day-by-day -day travel distinct from other kinds of travel is to look at the most popular alternative, which you could almost describe as fast travel. This is the method used in games where you want to get the players from one location to another and you're not that interested in what happens along the way. The players are about to leave one city and they know that the villain they're chasing is on the other side of the country in another city, so instead of wasting time fighting some bandits on the road, you just want to get to where the action is. Now, I really understand why people go for this approach and in many respects, it might be the best option for you if you're trying to do a big globe-trotting campaign with high stakes and no time for little side quests. But, especially early on in a long campaign, small diversions and side quests on the road from A to B are some of the best content and some of the most immersive content that brings the players into the world and makes the world around them feel more real and alive. With the fast travel approach, moving from one key location to another could probably take half or most of one session. The players leave one location, the DM does a little bit of flavour description to describe the landscape changing around them, and then maybe they have one small encounter on the road. They run into some bandits or someone needs their help. It's not a major event, it's just one little encounter to break up that journey. And then by the second half of the session, they've arrived in their new location, potentially many, many days travel from where they were at the start of the session. With day-by-day -day travel, pretty much every day of the journey involves some interesting side quest or event and these side quests and events usually take up about a full session. That means that a five day journey across the map is probably going to take about five sessions and sometimes more. Now, this at first might sound slightly unhinged because you're imagining that along the way my players are going to have to deal with endless numbers of 1d4 bandit attack encounters, these small contextless, meaningless, low-stakes events that just pad out the runtime. But that's not the case. I make sure that if my players encounter something on the road, it's something that adds to their experience. It's a fun encounter, it builds the lore of the world around them, it gives them a chance to feel more immersed in this world. It's always a net positive overall, it's not just padding for time. And because each session is about one day of travel, I always have at least a week before my next session, so I have plenty of time to prep another interesting encounter for them. Now obviously that demands that you produce a lot more content overall. You can't just skip a large area of land and just say, yeah, you pass through some towns and some forests and now you're here at your location. No, you have to know what's in those forests and what's in those towns. But you only need to know for each individual session. I don't plan out the entire journey, I just look at the map and I say, okay, on our next day of travel, we're gonna pass through one town and then we're gonna cross a bridge here that I've marked on the map. Cool, I'll work out a fun little bridge encounter, maybe with some bandits that have a strange mystery going on, maybe one of the bandit leaders is a lost nobleman, something like that and then I'm going to flesh out the town that they'll pass through, and that can all be done in a couple of hours across the week leading up to that session. Then we have that session, it's beautiful, we move on to the, the next week of preparation. I'm never having to do too much work in one go. And of course this also means that I will probably have about a month or more to prepare for the next big quest location that plays the 
characters are actually trying to get to. The simplest way to approach this is to just make sure that the regional map you have is covered in landmarks and points of interest. You don't need to know what any of these landmarks are until your players reach them, but just scribble onto your map a little town, a ruined tower, a weird cave by the roadside, and again you don't need to worry about them until your players actually reach them. But whenever my players are traveling, they're usually traveling by road, and every day of travel on that road I have a couple of little things on the map that I know I'll be able to flesh out when the players get close to them. It's a bit like draw distance in a video game. You don't render the content until the players are coming into an area where they can interact with it. Now there's a few reasons why I prefer the day-by-day -day method to the fast travel approach. Reason number one is it gives me a lot more room to tell little side stories that aren't tied to the bigger quest. I find that huge save the world stories are great, but if you get too hooked on them and if you never get time to dally for a while in a little village or go to a wayside tavern and discover a dark secret, you're missing half the fun of the game. For me, so many of the best memories that my players and I have from our games are the strange little things they stumbled on in the world while they were on their way to save the world. And speaking of the world, world building is also one of the big benefits that comes out of this day-by-day -day approach. Your players have the time to wander through the world, meet different NPCs and see the world from different perspectives. Maybe people in the cities have one view of things, one view of the king or the army, but when the players go out into the rural communities and the villages, they get a different point of view and they understand different angles on history that maybe they weren't told before. Th this is where the world building really starts to flourish because your players are just living and breathing in the space rather than being kind of shuttled from one location to another to serve as a bigger story. And day by day travel also affords you many opportunities to show the players that they are having a real influence and impact on the world around them. I love having my players walk into a town, book a room at the tavern, and then overhear people talking about their own great deeds from a few days or weeks earlier, perhaps not realising that the heroes they're talking about are in the common room with them. For example, my players recently defeated an evil Feywild tyrant who was disrupting relations between the Feywild and the Material Plane. And as a result of that, as the players continue on their adventures, they started noticing trade and relations blossoming between the two planes. There are more Feywild items and artifacts being sold now in Material Plane stores, and when they go to cities in the Feywild, they see more normal humanoid creatures from the Material Plane who have come through to engage with this other culture. And whenever they notice those small elements, although they're not majorly important for the story, they get that sense that their actions have shaped the future of this world through which they're now traveling. To try to illustrate this point and show you how it all works in practice, I want to talk you through a five-day journey that my players underwent a few months ago. The party is in the town of Soulstar, and they hear rumors of strange demonic activity around some ruins to the north. The ruins are five days journey from Soulstar, so that's a five day journey that they now embark on by road. On day one they travel north along the coast and after describing the wintry landscape changing around them, I run an encounter in which they see a shipwrecked vessel locked in the ice just off the coast. They go down, they investigate, it's full of zombies and treasure, they have a great time. That pretty much fills out most of the session, and we have them camp that night, and the next day they travel on to arrive at the town of Dunstire, where we end the session. In session two, they find that Dunstire is under siege by a bandit lord that they've been hearing rumours about. They jump in, they fight the bandit lord, they break the siege, and we end the game after an intense combat encounter on the bridge outside the city. On the third day and session of the journey, the players receive some rewards for having broken the siege and saved Dunstire. They do some shopping and get supplies, and then they continue on towards the ruins. On the road, the players encounter a young werewolf who is being pursued by kind of evil paladins. The players side with the werewolf, and a really intense, fun combat encounter takes place. It's also interesting because one of my players had recently contracted lycanthropy, and it was a moment for her to come to terms with what it meant to be a werewolf and what it meant to be part of this strange, cursed clan. In our fourth session, the players arrived in a small town, the last town before they reached the ruins that are meant to be their final destination. However, in this town they found some local problems that needed to be solved, and they decided to stick around for a further two sessions to fight mind-controlling fungus and cleanse a forest temple. It's now session seven, the players have saved the town and they're finally ready to continue on to the ruins. 
which they do after some roleplay stuff in the town. There's a banquet to celebrate the town being saved. They do eventually leave. On the road to the, the ruins, they encounter one of the demons that came through a portal from the ruins, and an intense combat encounter ensues on the road. Once that encounter is over, they continue on, and we end the session with them arriving at the demon-infested ruins. That five-day journey, which we could have just skimmed through with some fast travel descriptions, ended up taking more than 20 hours of playtime. It spanned seven sessions, and that was before they even got to the ruins. In that time, they made alliances, made new enemies, found new NPC companions. They saved multiple towns and grew their reputation as heroes in the land. They found out more lore about this bandit lord who went on to become a major villain later in the campaign. So much came out of that little decision to go five days to the north and check out some ruins. Anyway, that's the video. This was just an unscripted kind of ramble to discuss travel and, and why I take the approach that I do. Uh, I just wanted to say as well, this is my first video using my new camera, which was bought entirely with Patreon money. So tremendous thanks to all of the patrons who are supporting the channel and supporting the upgrade and the equipment. I've been able to film this video as one single take, although I've edited out the kind of fluffs and stumbles along the way, which is something I could never do before because my old camera only filmed in like five minute segments, which was a nightmare. But anyway, thank you for sticking around and I hope you found this video useful.